Now, I'd just like to talk a little bit about circular motion, which is very much just objects moving on a circular path. Now, it could be, in this case here, maybe me on a motorbike going around a roundabout, or it could be something a bit more mundane, just like a mass on the end of a string. This is kind of something which you might have seen shown to you in the physics lab. Now, the important thing here is we're talking about objects which are going at a constant speed. And that means in one second, they travel the same distance, but they have a changing velocity. Now, you've got to remember that a velocity is the speed in a given direction. And if you've got something that is constantly changing its direction, then its velocity must also be changing as well. So sometimes when I was going around the roundabout, at some points I was going north, then east, then south, then west. I had a continually changing velocity. And if we think about what a velocity which is changing means, that means we also have an acceleration. Now, most of the time when we talk about acceleration, we're thinking about things which are speeding up or slowing down. So we're changing the magnitude, but because acceleration and vector are uh, and velocity are vector quantities, if we're changing the direction of something's velocity, that means it's also accelerating. It's just changing direction rather than changing how fast it's moving. Now, Newton's second law says that F equals ma. If you've got an acceleration, there must be a resultant force causing that. So in the case of a bike which is going around a roundabout, so this bike here just represents a real motorbike. We've got a red arrow to show the direction it's going in at a certain point. And also this is showing the size of the speed and that's going to be staying constant. The velocity is going to be changing because we've got this acceleration caused by a resultant force. And here, the important thing to note is that there's a 90 degree angle between the resultant force and the direction it's moving in. Because it's at 90 degrees, it doesn't speed it up or slow it down, but it does change the direction. In actual fact, this force here is actually directed towards the centre of the circle and it's called a centripetal or a centre-seeking force. Now, in the case of the motorbike going around the roundabout, this force is actually caused by the friction between the tyres and the ground. In the case of the string, it's caused by the tension in the string pulling that mass in. And also, if we think about you know, things like the Earth and the Moon, the force that is causing the Moon to orbit the Earth is caused by gravity. There's a gravitational attraction between these two objects and that's pulling the moon in towards the earth and therefore it keeps going around at a constant speed but it's going around in this circular orbit or indeed we might have our earth going around the sun or even the sun going around a supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. So the important thing to note is when you've got circular motion we've got a constant speed but a changing velocity because of the changing direction. Therefore, there's an acceleration caused by a centripetal force. In fact, the force is really dependent upon three factors. It depends on the mass of the object. The bigger the mass of something, the bigger that centripetal force. It also depends upon the speed of the object. The faster it's going, the faster, so the bigger the force. And finally, it's um, due to the radius, the distance of that object from the center of the circle. The smaller the radius, the bigger the force needed. So that is centripetal force.